All right, guys. A few years ago, I had this idea. It's a little bit mad, but I thought I'd give it a go anyway. And if it turns out all right, I'll upload it to my YouTube channel. So if you're watching this now, it means it must have turned out okay. Now I'm really curious. You've seen it, but I haven't. Better get on with it. Let's get making. In the past, I've made skateboards like this one here and a longboard like this one. I've also done a bit of sculpting. I've sculpted cars, Formula One cars, aeroplanes, fish, more fish, even more fish. I've even sculpted this massive fish. This time I'm going to sculpt a snake and what I'm going to try and do is to make it look like it's broken through the board and it's winding its way up and down. Here's a plan I've drawn to give you a bit of a better idea. I've drawn the shape of the board onto a piece of wood and I've put the positions where my feet will be when I'm stood and where my foot will be when you set off. And what I'm going to try and do is make the head of the snake look as if it's through the board and then it goes under the foot like this, out of the bottom, back on the top, underneath, on top, under the foot again, ending up with the tail of the snake at the end of the skateboard. I don't want the skateboard to flex too much so that the sculpted pieces don't break off. So I've got myself some 8mm plywood for strength and on top of this I'm going to make some strips glued together and that will make it look smart and it will give me something to cut into so I can fit my sculpted pieces. The first thing I've got to do is cut this to size and make some strips. A few years ago, I made these templates to make this exact same shape skateboard. But when I cut it out, I made a little bit of a mistake on the centre and I cut it too thin. So the project just got abandoned. But a few weeks ago, I took the piece that I'd made and I turned it into this electric scooter trailer. But now I'm going to reuse these templates and I'm going to make sure that when I cut the centre out, I'm going to modify it slightly so it turns out right. I've made myself a paper template which is slightly wider than the original template. So now I just have to stick it on then I can fold over and draw the other side. Perfect. So now I have to cut this out and glue and clamp the centre strip on the top and the bottom of the board. The next thing I have to do is to glue the centre strip on one piece either side. But some of these pieces are not quite long enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to join them underneath where this piece of the snake sits on top of the board. And that way this will be hidden 
and it'll look like one continuous piece. So now the first three pieces are made, I can start gluing everything on. Well, it was a few hours ago since I put these pieces on. It seems about dry, so I'm going to try and get some more pieces on. I've finished covering the top of the board now, so I'm going to plane it until all the pieces are about the same thickness and then I'll go over it with my sander to make it nice and smooth. Uh, after that, I'm going to turn it over and do the bottom. And once the bottom's all done, then I'll cut the final shape so that all the pieces are cut at the same time. Oh. Well that wasn't easy, but it's done now, it's all nice and flat, now I'm going to give it a quick sand so it's all perfectly smooth. So now that this side's done, I just have to do the same on this side. I've made myself this drawing and it's a rough idea of what I'm trying to achieve. Um, you've got your plan view, your forward view and your side view. Now, the thickness of the head is going to be just a bit thicker than one of these pieces. So what I'm going to do today is try and transfer this onto here, cut out the shape and start to cut the top of the head and if I feel that it's going reasonable then what I'm going to do is glue that on top of this piece before I finish tonight and then I'll finish the bottom part of the top of the head tomorrow. Sounds a bit complicated that but let's give it a go. Well, I've got loads of sanding to do now, so I'll bring you back even when I've got something to show you. Well, it's taken me long enough, but now I've got a pattern that I'm happy enough with. So all I have to do is burn them lines in.
this is not easy. The, the point on this seems to burn some places easier than it does others and it keeps wanting to follow the grain of the wood. So you have to be careful otherwise just you've drawn a straight line and it just cuts it how it wants. While I've been waiting for the glue to dry on this snake's head, I finished the bottom of the board. So now what I'm going to do is cut it to its final shape, round all the edges over, and then I can get on with the snake's body. Like I said earlier, this jig is too narrow. This paper template is right, but unfortunately, I can't use this to run my router. So I have to modify this to the same shape as this. just seen me paint two drawing pins for the eyes. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to fit one of them. So the first thing I did was recessed the eye socket and now I push the drawing pin in and I'm going to cover that with clear resin and that's why I can only do one at a time because I can't tip the thing over to do the other one or else the resin will run out.
The last thing I'm going to do today is make a fang and I'm going to make that out of this nail. Put it in my drill. File a point on it. And now I just bend it a little bit for the first 15 millimeters. And now I just cut it to length. And there we have a pair of fangs ready for gluing and fitting. So when the paint's dry on the head, I'll drill two little holes and I can put these in place. Make sure they're both the same length and they're pointing in the right direction. There we go, the hard bit's done. I've made the head and I've made the jaw. So now that I've done them, I'm going to make all the pieces of the snake's body, starting with the bits that fit on top of the board. To match these two pieces up, I'm going to put paint on the back of the head and then I'm going to push them together and hopefully we should have the shape of the head the same pattern on the piece of wood. And hopefully that's the shape I've got to cut out. I've marked around it and now I just have to get shaping. Well, I've got a bit of a problem here. Because of the angle of the head, it means that the snake's body can't be this long and it's going to have to enter into the board a lot sooner but I've also got to be able to show the direction so I'm, I don't know I'm going to do it at the moment but I will do it and then when I do I'll start filming again and you can see how I did it because I have no idea at the moment I've no idea I'm just gonna to have to make it up as I go along well it's a few hours later and my plan of making it smaller just didn't work. It didn't look right. So that's out the window. I've had to revert back to my original plan, which is making a big piece. And unfortunately, that means I have to reshape the head. So I've sanded the head flat. I've got to glue a new piece on. And when that's dry, I've got to reshape the head. So then I can fit... Uh, a big piece of body behind it. Unfortunately, that's set me back a few days now because I've got to wait for all the glue to dry and then I've got to start reshaping. But hey, when you've never done something like this before, there's always going to be problems. So let's just get on with it.
After the setback I had yesterday, I decided I'm going to remake the entire piece. So while that glue's drying, I'm going to get on with making these pieces of the body. So now I've got this piece finished, I have to try and rescue this piece. I've just realised that this piece is wider than the board, so somehow it's going to come over the edge. I don't know how I'm going to do that, but let's just give it a go. You can see that the edge of the board finishes here. So to make this piece look like it's sitting on the edge, I'm going to have to remove this and then round this piece off to fit this part of the board. So now that I've cut this off, I have to try and shape it to fit the board. That's not too bad. I'm quite pleased with that. So now I'm going to round it off and make the point line up with this point over here. The last piece that I have to make is the tip of the tail. I want it to look like it's going into the board, but I don't want it to go over the edges or out the back because it's very long and thin and I don't want it to snap off. So I've got an idea where it looks like it's coming out and then rests back on the end here. Something like this. I'm just going to give it a go and then see what it looks like. The last piece to finish now and then the top of the board is finished. Now that I've finished making all the pieces for the top of the board, I can fit them in place. But before I do that, I have to trace a line that the snake follows. And that way, when I make all the pieces for the underneath, it'll look like one continuous snake and not just a load of pieces all bodged together.
Now what I'm trying to do is imagine where the snake would be going underneath the board. And I'm going to just keep toying about with this until, until I come up with something that I'm reasonably happy with. After I finished making this sketch, I made this piece that fits on the underside of the board just to get an idea of if it's going to work or not. And here's what it looks like. It's only temporarily fitted. I think it's looking alright that. Now I just have to make all the other bits and get them all fitted. I've finished making all the pieces but as you can see I haven't painted the ones that fit on the underneath of the board and the reason for that is I want to fit all the pieces on the top of the board first and there's a little chance that they may slightly move position and if they do that means I'll have to reshape uh, these pieces on the bottom I don't think it'll happen but it might, so I'm not going to paint them and then have to sand them all. Uh, which means the next thing I have to do is fit the pieces onto the top of the board and draw around them. And once I've drawn around them, I have to do the least favourite bit, which is cutting into the board. And uh, well, I have to do it. Nothing. There's no other way, so um, let's get on with it. Well, here we go. This is the hardest thing I'm going to have to do now. I've got to cut into the board. I'm going to cut just slightly smaller than the piece itself and then break the edges to slot this piece in. If I get this wrong, everything's ruined. So I'm starting with the smallest piece. I'd like to start on the bottom, but I can't start on the bottom because if something moves, it'll move all the pieces on the top of the board and it just won't look right so I have to start on the top so I'm going to start with the smallest piece and if I get something wrong hopefully I won't if I get something wrong then um, when I come to the bigger pieces I'll learn from my mistakes let's just hope I get it right here we go Well, there's the first piece done. Quite pleased how it's turned out. Although you won't really get the full effect until some of the other pieces are fitted. And with that said, whoa, just 11 pieces to go. Plenty of scope to ruin it yet. <laughs> Let's get on with it.
one more piece to fit on the top of the board, and that's the snake's head and neck. Snakes have necks? I don't know. But anyway, that's the piece I've got to fit. Once I've done that, then I can then I can make sure that all the pieces on the underneath line up with the pieces on the top. And if they do, I'll paint them and finish the scales, get them fitted before moving on to fitting the wheels and trucks. And then it'll all be finished. So let's get on with it. Well, now they're all painted, let's get them fitted. I've just realised I've got to do the black lines first. To finish this board off, there's just a couple more things to do. One of them is giving the wood a coat of protection, and the other thing is fitting the trucks. Now to fit the trucks on this skateboard, you can't do it in the normal way. The normal way is drilling a hole through the top of the board, countersinking it, putting your screws in, and then turning the board over, fitting your trucks, and tightening the nuts onto the screws. I've actually made a video showing you how to do that and I'm going to put a link in the top right hand corner so that uh, if, you, if you need to fit trucks you can see exactly how you're supposed to do it. But on this, on this board I can't do it like that. And the reason being is I can't drill through the board because there's a big piece of snake on the back. So what I've had to do is make two of these and what I've done is I've put the bolts through this and countersunk the heads and when I tightened them up I made sure that they were a really tight fit and they're bonded in position so they don't turn when I put the nuts on and now all I have to do is fit that to the board and then I can drop the truck onto the bolts put the nuts on and then tomorrow when I get home from work I'll be able to fit the other truck and the skateboard will be finished. Well, there we go guys it's the day after the paint's dried on the trucks so now I can reassemble them and then I can get them fitted. Before I show you the final result, I've got one more thing to do, and that is to give the wood a coat of this hard wax oil. Not only will it protect the wood, but it'll make it look absolutely fantastic. So give me a minute to do that, and then I'll show you the finished board.
So there it is guys, the new expert snake boards are all finished. What it actually is, is a dagger-tailed longboard. I just made that name up because the back of the board, it's shaped like a dagger. Oh, never mind. Fitted with 185 millimeter wide ram trucks, 70 millimeter 78A area wheels, and they've been fitted with ABEC 9 bearings, so this thing really does roll. Now some of you must be thinking, but does it actually work? Can I actually ride it? Well, when I first drew it, I designed it so that my feet had fit onto the board where the pieces of the snake are on the underside. So, in theory, yeah, I suppose I could ride it. Although, I can't imagine Lisa Peters giving me a call saying, hey, can I borrow your snake board and make a downhill video? But if she does, well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. In the meantime, if you like this or any of the other things I've made, you can help me channel out by clicking that like button or better still, subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching guys. I really appreciate it. Catch you next time.